Hey there, it's Aviva from Elementor. Welcome back to How to Build a Blog in Elementor. In the last lesson, we got familiar with the theme builder and learned how to use it to customize different parts of our site. In this lesson, we'll learn two different ways to create blog posts. First, by using the WordPress Gutenberg editor, and second, with the Elementor editor. We'll also cover essential blogging best practices. So let's begin with creating blog posts. The WordPress Gutenberg editor provides us with a more automated method of creating posts and presents an optimal solution for entering and editing multiple blog posts in a row. While the Elementor editor provides us with a highly customizable way to style our posts layout. We'll go over both methods and understand which situations call for using each one, depending on our goals and needs. So grab a snack, sit back, and let's get started. We'll begin by creating a new post using the default Gutenberg editor. From the WordPress dashboard, go to Posts. Notice that the Posts area, unlike Pages, shows the different taxonomies we have available for posts. Categories and Tags. These posts were imported along with the kit we selected, which we can use as placeholder posts to preview our layouts while we design them. This screen gives us an overview of all our existing posts, along with essential information, such as the post's author, its categories, tags, number of comments, and date published or last saved. Here we can see which posts have been edited with Elementor. We'll see how to edit posts in Elementor later in the lesson, but for now, let's create a new post by clicking here. Welcome to the Gutenberg Editor. Also known as the WordPress Block Editor, it's divided into three main sections, the top bar, the Block Editor content area on the left, and the Settings sidebar on the right. At the top, we'll find a number of options, such as returning to the WordPress dashboard and block editing options. Clicking the Details icon will give us more information, including the number of words in our article and how many headings we're using. We can also edit the page with Elementor and set the Publish and Preview options we need. Clicking this gear icon will either display or hide the settings sidebar. And lastly, we have more interface and WordPress options available by clicking these three dots. Okay, let's get this post going. We'll give our blog post a title. Next, we'll add content. The content we add to this post is defined by blocks. To add text, we'll start with a simple paragraph block. Selecting a block indicates the block type, along with different formatting options. Change the block type quickly by clicking the block icon and choosing a different block type, or create a new paragraph block by hitting Enter on your keyboard. Click this icon to add a new block. Use one of the basic blocks offered here, or search for the block you need. Click here to expand the menu, which offers a variety of different blocks to use in your article. You can also type forward slash and the name of the block you need without leaving the work area to stay focused on your content. In addition, whenever we add or select an existing block, this sidebar changes to show us the block description along with its settings. For example, this heading block allows for changing the text size and color. While adding an image block will give different style and dimension options. Now that we understand the basics of blocks, let's see how we can set, change, and update individual post settings from here. In the sidebar, click the Post tab to display the post's settings. Let's go over them one by one. First, control the post's visibility here. Set the post as public to allow everyone access. Make it private so that only site admins and editors will be able to see it or protect it with a password. 
When we're done, we can either publish our post immediately or set it to be published later. This is a great feature for batch writing and scheduling blog posts. To make this post more prominent, we can stick it to the top of the blog so it will always show up as the first article. Next, we'll move to the Permalink tab, where we can set the post's link. We'll need to first publish or save this post as a draft in order to edit it. Let's keep its URL short and sweet and on topic. Note that any spaces used in this field will turn into a hyphen. Great, let's move on to adding the right category to the post. Recall that all posts are automatically added to the uncategorized category. Since Xander has only one category, we don't need to change it. But should we ever have multiple topics within our blog, adding new categories and naming them properly will help keep our blog organized. To add categories, click Add New Category and give it a proper name. Remember, categories are hierarchical, so we can set parent categories for any category we create. To see and manage all our categories, we'll go back to the WordPress dashboard and, under Posts, go to Categories. Here we can add a new category, set its URL, define a parent category, and give it a description, if desired. This screen is especially helpful since it gives us an overview of how many posts we have under each category. To edit or delete a category, we can simply hover over and choose the action we need. Again, Xander has only one category, so adding new categories isn't needed at this time. However, it's recommended to use descriptive names for our taxonomies, such as for this uncategorized category. Back in our first post, along with categories, we can add different tags. To add new tags, type in your desired keywords, separating them by either a comma or by pressing enter. Note that we can add and manage new tags in the same way we do with categories. Once we're done with our categories and tags, we'll set a featured image for our post. This image will show up as our post's thumbnail on our blog and in social media posts. Below, we can add an excerpt for our post, which can be useful for social media posts and article layout, as we'll see later in this lesson. Knowing how to add a new post to our blog is a great start, but in order for our articles to make an impact around the web, we need to make our posts accessible and easy to find. A post that is easy to navigate and read, and that uses relevant keywords, will rank higher in search engines, helping us reach more people. This may sound like tons of work, but actually, we can accomplish this with just a bit of planning. We'll start by setting up a simple hierarchy to our text, separating our article's text copy into a heading, paragraphs, and subheadings. First, every web page has a title. This is our H1 heading, and there should be only one H1 heading on every page. As we continue to write, we can divide our article or page into sections and give each one a subheading, which is where H2 headings come into play. We can use up to six different headings, with each one used as a subheading for the one that came before it. Back in WordPress, I've already added this post by Xander, so we can see hierarchy in action. This article has been structured through use of multiple paragraphs and subheadings. However, if we look closely, we'll notice that what appear to be subheadings are actually paragraph blocks. Let's change each one by selecting it and switching from paragraph to heading. You'll notice that every new heading is assigned H2 by default, but that can be changed here. Once all our text is added, we can make the post more engaging by adding an image block or even a video. As with text, it's good practice to label our images properly, 
starting with the file name and adding a title and alt text to the image. Alt text, short for alternative text, is used to add a short descriptive text label for images we add to our site. It will display whenever the image cannot be loaded properly or when accessed from a screen reader, which makes our site both accessible and optimized for search engines. Once the article is complete, we can publish and preview it. You'll notice this post already has a basic structure. This is because the kit contains a single post template, which has been used for all of the articles brought in with the kit. The text typography, however, doesn't match our design, since it takes its style from the hello theme. We'll see how we can customize this in the next lesson. Now that we've seen how to add and style posts in Gutenberg, we'll see how to do this in Elementor. As we've seen, the styling options in Gutenberg are somewhat limited compared to Elementor. Something to keep in mind when using Elementor to edit posts, however, is that while we can create customizable and unique designs using Elementor, it may not be as efficient of a method as Gutenberg when used on a large scale, such as for blogs, where we'll be adding or editing a large number of posts at once. Let's go back to the WordPress dashboard and see how we can create a customized post using the Elementor editor. We'll give the post a title and use the first paragraph for the excerpt. We'll see how this comes in handy in the next lesson. Click Edit with Elementor. To begin building our post, we'll scroll down to find the content area and start adding in the widgets we need like the text editor widget, and the heading widget. Just like in the Gutenberg block editor, every heading widget is assigned the H2 tag by default and should be changed as needed. We'll keep adding widgets with our post's content. And let's not forget, we can duplicate widgets for a faster workflow. You may have noticed that the headings come pre-styled in the Elementor editor. This is because both the headings and the text editor are pulling in the global styles we set in an earlier lesson. Once we're finished with that, we can enhance this article by using widgets like the slides or gallery. And with that, we've covered everything we need to know to add and edit new posts to our blog. So go ahead and add any remaining posts using the method that best suits your blog's needs. In our next lesson, we'll see how to style posts created with the Gutenberg editor, as well as how to customize the post template to our liking. So be sure to keep watching. <laughs>